Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Learn and have fun, cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Okay, friends, today we're learning about a group of animals. Today we're learning about a group of animals that call the rocky shore a home. Can you guess what this animal is? Did you guess the animal? Yeah. And hermit crabs live on the rocky shore. And they do have a body part that looks very similar to the sea snails we learned about last week. Let's take a look at that. Look at this hermit crab. It has a body part that is similar to a snail. Do you know what it is? The shell, yeah. Hermit crabs, like all crabs, have an exoskeleton, which means an outer skeleton. And this exoskeleton is like a suit of armor. Crabs, like snails, are animals that don't have bones and their bodies are soft. For crabs, an exoskeleton protects their soft body. But hermit crabs are a little different because part of their body is very soft and does not have an exoskeleton. Hermit crabs use snail shells to protect their soft body. Snails grow their shells. Hermit crabs do not grow shells. They find snail shells to live in. They also use shells to hide inside and protect themselves from other animals trying to eat them and from the very strong ocean waves.
when you go to the beach, it's really important that you leave the shells there because it's a home for a hermit crab or another animal that wants to live in that shell. When a hermit crab grows, it needs a new shell, so it needs a bigger shell, so we have to leave them there. But these animals um, have other body parts that help them survive, so let's take a look at some of those body parts. All crabs have eight legs and two claws. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight legs. One, two, two claws. They use their legs to move. What body part do we use to move our body? Our legs. They use their two claws to protect themselves from other animals trying to eat them. They also use them to get their food. And they use them to hold onto the rocks so that the waves don't carry them to the open ocean. Hermit crabs are special because one of their claws is bigger than the other. Crabs have eyes, antennas, and a mouth. Um, can you make claws with me? Yeah, pretend to be a crab and use your claws to get food. Mmm, yum, 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 so delicious. Crabs move sideways. So, Using your cross legs and your claws, move to the left and then to the right. Great crabbing, friends. Now, today we have a special friend with us because we are going to get to meet some of the crabs that we have here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. So our friend's name is Stephanie. And Steph Stephanie, Steph, um, is an aquarist, and she gets to work with these animals, and she gets to feed them. So that's what she's going to be doing today. Steph, what are you feeding them today? Squid. She's feeding them squid. So we have a hermit crab friend right there, and she's going to try to feed it. So hermit crabs sometimes get scared and they go into their shell. So when the hermit crab saw her fingers coming, it got a little scared. But she just left the food there for him to wait so that when he's ready to come out and get food, he just eats it. Let's go see if we can find another crab here. Woo, we're going on a ride. Okay. Yeah, so she's feeding this little crab that's in there, and you can see her fingers. Did he take it, Steph? Yay, he took it. Yeah. Steph, how often do you feed um, the crabs here at the touch tank? We feed them every other day. So they feed them every other day.
Friends, how often do you eat? Do you eat every other day? I eat twice a day. Oh, there's another cool crab that I want to point out. This crab right here, right in there, that's the rhinoceros crab. And he's really cool. I have a video to show you later. Do you know what a rhino has on his forehead? They have a horn, yeah, and we can't see it right now. But this rhinoceros crab also has a little horn on his head. Ooh, look at this hermit crab coming out. What color is it? It's red, yeah. Do they like to eat other things or just squid? They eat everything. Well, they sound like me. So friends, here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, you can also come and touch um, these crabs here that we have. Steph is feeding them right now, so I won't touch those that are eating. But um, you can also touch the sea star, again, using one or two gentle fingers. Do you have any questions for Steph? Oh, um, Steph, why is one claw bigger than the other for the hermit crab? Yeah, so Steph says that it's so that they can tear the food apart um, and get the food easier so that the other claw doesn't get in the way. Great question. Cool. So friends, while Steph is still feeding um, the hermit crabs here, we're gonna move on to our, our activity. But first I want us to say thanks to Steph. Thank you Steph so much for helping us out today. Um, and our friends are really uh, grateful too that you um, helped us out today and you're feeding the animals. And thank you hermit crabs too. So let's move on to our activity. Um, I just need to dry my hand a little. Oh, there's another question. Do these crabs get sick? Um, Steph, do the crabs get sick? Yeah, she said not really um, because they're in cold water, so it's hard for bacteria and viruses to grow here. But for the activity today, we are going to be um, using these two PDFs here, or these two uh, pieces of paper. We're going to be decorating our own decorator crab, um, which we didn't see in the touch tank today, but there's one in there. You're going to need scissors. I chose color pencils, but you can choose anything you want to color with. and um, also glue. Oh, and you're going to need anything you want to decorate your decorator crab with. I have feathers, and I also have pipe cleaners and um, some yarn that I found. So we're gonna start by uh, coloring our, hermit, our decorator crab. And I'm going to use pink for the eyes. Yeah. How deep of water can a hermit crab live in? Um, for these here, not very deep because they live in the tide pools and the tide pools are not um, too deep at all. Um, like some people can go walking in them, but it's prefer prefer preferably to not do that just because we don't wanna hurt the animals there. Um, but I don't know, Steph, do you know of any deep sea uh, hermit crab? Yeah, so they, some of them can also live um, deep, but these that we have here don't. Rebecca, 
because do mm -hmm. crabs grow? Do crabs grow? They do grow. And so I, I said that the hermit crabs, when they grow, they need a new uh, shell, but they have an exoskeleton that they shed or they get rid of all the time, every year. And so um, they just walk out of their old exoskeleton and grow a new one, and this is called molting. And then I'm going to use this brown. It looks a little orange, but it's brown for the antenna. Rebecca, do hermit crabs only live in shells? No, they don't. When they're small, they can really live in anything, but um, preferably shells. But look at this baby hermit crab. He lives, he's living in the molt of a bigger crab claw. Isn't he so silly? Yeah. I really enjoy um, looking at crabs, Shauna. I think they're really cool. What other kind of crab do you, do you have in Oh, life? yeah. So um, I do want to show you that um, rhinoceros crab that I kind of pointed out. This is what he looks like. Can you see his horn? It's at the very front, right by the eyes, in between the eyes there. And this is a red king crab. He's really, really big. Look at those claws. And decorator crabs are really cool. Um, so we didn't get to see it, but I do have a video of it to show you about why it's called a decorator crab. Can you see the crab? He's right there. And he has seaweed or algaes all over him. So he uses his claws to tear apart little pieces of seaweed. And then he puts them all on himself. And he does this so that he blends in with his environment in his home. So that he camouflages. That's a fancy word, I know. Um, yeah, yeah. Are they born from eggs? Yes, um, they do. The females carry the eggs um, in their, in her belly, and some and sometimes you can see them at the beach. Um, a female. It's a little, you know, slower to walk, and she's just a little um, slow. But because she's carrying so many eggs with her, and taking care of her babies. What colors are you using for your crab? Rebecca, do you have a favorite kind of crab? <gasps> Ooh, great question, Shauna. I think I have to think about this one. Shauna asked me if I have a favorite um, crab. Do you have a favorite crab? My favorite crab is the rhinoceros crab. The rhinoceros crab is Shauna's favorite. Yeah, that one's really cool. You know, Shauna, I really like the decorator crab, but because he decorates himself, instead of decorating his home, he decorates himself. And he just does that to protect himself too, or herself. Whoa, I know it's a lot of coloring too. Um, friends, I want to take this time to uh, tell you that if you haven't joined our Facebook group, the link is in the description. So go ahead and join, um, yeah, join that. You will um, have to answer some questions um, before you get approved into the group. But we will be posting lots of different cool activities and things to do um, 
for the rest of the school, the school year and the summer and going forward as well. Allison, do you have a favorite crab? Allison likes the pygmy rock crab because they're tiny. This is the body, so I'm also going to color it red. Hey, Rebecca, do crabs swim? I haven't seen one swim. They mostly walk. They use their legs for walking. Um, but there is another animal in here that is related to a crab, and that's the shrimp. Um, and shrimp do swim, and they swim backwards. Friends, do you have a favorite crab? I'd like to know if you have one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I finished coloring mine. So now it's time to take your scissors and this sheet here, we are going to cut along the lines, the dotted lines here. Cut all around. If you need help, um, you can ask your adult or someone around you to help you with this. Make sure to cut very, very slowly and gently so that you don't hurt yourself. Rebecca, do decorator crabs use only certain things for decoration? Um, no, they don't. So the question was if decorator crabs only use certain things for decoration, and no, sometimes they will, um, if there's like tiny little anemones there, they're called strawberry anemones, they will put those on themselves too. It really um, depends what is in their uh, tide pool, in their rocky shore home, that then they'll take parts of that and put them on themselves just to blend in so that they hide from predators. And those are animals trying to eat them. I think that's also why they're my favorite because um, I have seen them put silly things on them, on themselves to blend in. Oh, one of ours here put a baby sea star on himself one time, like a little hat. Okay, that's done. Naomi's crab, favorite crab is also the decorator crab because she likes the decoration. <laughs> um, Naomi's favorite crab is also the decorator crab because she likes all the decorations. I agree, Naomi. There, they are? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so friends, if this is a little too um, time consuming for you or this is a little too much, you can also just go around like this. You don't have to cut all um, in between here, between the legs. Um, because after you color it, you can still see that the crab has legs. So you can do that. We have the legs there for walking. Next, we need the two claws. Have you ever touched a crab, Shauna? Yes, they're really cool. But Shauna, you've lived in other really cool places. Have you um, seen other really cool crabs? There are all different kinds of crabs, but there's actually hermit crabs everywhere. Like we have them here in cold water, but they also like breathing warm water. Mm -hmm. And there's also the land hermit crabs. So Shauna says um, you can find hermit crabs everywhere in cold water and in warm water. For those of you that are watching from outside of Alaska, Alaska has pretty cold water. Very much so. Okay, I know friends, this is a lot of cutting and coloring, but I promise 
your hermit uh, decorator crab is going to look super fancy. Um, so this that I'm cutting now are the antenna. They have two. Wow. Shauna says that in Florida, crabs are blue, but they look orange. Sometimes when I'm doing crabs, I completely get lost in my mind and what I'm going to do with my craft. And that's what happened there. Oopsie daisy. Have you friends seen a crab out in the wild, out on the beach, the ocean? I have, um, I love tide pooling. So that's when we wait for the tide to be low so that the pools are exposed. And then you can go and um, look for really cool animals, which we've already talked about when we learned about the rocky shore. Um, but I really, um, and I enjoy doing that because you can find so many cool things. Okay, so now that we have all our pieces, we're going to take all of them and start gluing them together. So we have the legs right here. We have the claws right there. Oh, he has big claws. And then the antenna and the eyes. I think I'm gonna do that. But first, I'm going to glue the legs. So they have four legs on each side. One, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and glue that. Okay. I love this glue because it's purple. If there was like a pink or a blue glue, I would like that too. And next I'm going to glue my claws, or my decorator crab's claws, because I don't have claws. There we go. One time, I got pinched by a crab because he wasn't very happy with me. Um, I was teaching a group of students and he was stuck somewhere and we had to help him, but he didn't want to be helped. So he pinched me and then I let him be. And it hurt, friends. Crabs, crab claws are very strong and they use them to protect themselves. It hurt. <laughs> So when we touch crabs, we do it gently so that we don't scare them. These are the eyes now. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay. And last but not least, the fun part, you get to decorate your crab however you want. Um, I'm going to take this green feather and I'm gonna put it there. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so silly. Now I'm gonna take this purple one and put it right over here. So you take whatever you have at home because this decorator crab lives in your home. My decorator crab is going to live here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, so I found stuff that we have here. These are pipe cleaners. Let's do one over here just like that. And I also want to take some yarn, some blue yarn, and maybe put it right here in the middle. <laughs> right there. Whoa. Ta-da! So cool. I love my decorator crab. 
Okay, before we move on, I really want to show you some um, really cool things. So this here, maybe, yeah. So these are molds, um, which is what I was talking about. Sorry, friends, our camera is just a little frozen. We're going to try to um, get it back together. There we go. So these are some molds. This is the shrimp that I was telling you about that we have here, too. And look at his antenna. Wow. And he swims backwards. They're very fragile, so I don't want to pick them up too much. We have a rock crab here. And look at those big claws here. And then this is um, a hermit crab. So you can see that the soft part of the hermit crab doesn't have an exoskeleton like we learned. And so they only shed this other part, the front part. But this is that big claw. And we have another tiny little crab here. So this, they do this to grow. So every time they, have, they want to grow or they have to grow, they shed so they get rid of that exoskeleton and walk out walk back of it, um, like we saw in that video. And then it takes a few, um, a little bit of time for them to grow a new one. And they're really, really um, vulnerable. That's a big word. It's, it's a scary time for them during that time because their bodies is very soft and it takes some time for that new exoskeleton to get hard. And so they really, they hide so that other animals won't eat them. We have a tiny, tiny little crab molt here. So cool. Okay, friends, thank you so much for doing that um, craft with me. I had a lot of fun. Um, so I want to thank you guys for joining us today. And I also want to thank all the crabs that helped us learn. Um, it was so much fun. And to Steph for uh, helping us and feeding the animals so that we can all see. Next week, Shauna is going to be teaching you about sea stars, super fun. And again, if you haven't joined the, our Facebook group, the link is in the description below. So I will leave you with a story time about crabs so that you can learn a bit more. Bye. Life under the sea. Crabs by Carrie Meister. is hiding in the sand. A crab. Do you see its antennas? One, two. They help smell. Is there danger? No, it's safe. A little crab climbs out. He walks sideways. A crab's eyes are on eye stalks. They turn. This helps it see well. These are the eye stalks. Have one, two. One, two. A snail. Yum. Crabs also eat mussels and fish. Sometimes they eat other crabs. Oh no, what's this? A big crab waves his claw. Go away, little crab. This is my spot. The crabs fight. The big
big crab grabs the little crab's claw. It comes off. Is he okay? The little crab hides. He will live. In time, a new claw will grow. The big crab wins. What color is the big crab? Red. But he also has some yellows, a little black, and some orange and white. Parts of a crab. We have the antenna. Right there. These are the eye stalks and the claws. They use the claws for grabbing. These are muscles. And the snail. 